gather here uh, by myself at First Lutheran Church in Blair, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Scott Fredrickson and I welcome you to this Easter uh, celebration and service. Later on in the service, Bishop Brian Moss, he's the Bishop of the Nebraska Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, will bring a message that unites not only those of us in Nebraska together as we live through this time of self-distancing and social isolation, but rather uh, brings the world together in a promise of God's grace and love. So this particular Easter service also will conclude with the celebration of Holy Communion. And I invite you while you are at home to grab something to drink, a glass of wine or grape juice if you have it, uh, some bread, gluten-free, or another cracker, or something that could be part of helping you feel connected to those who will celebrate communion with you, but more importantly, to connect yourself to the promise of God's presence to be with you, not only in times when we can gather together here at a place like First Lutheran, but also in this time of diaspora, as we are scattered all across the city and the state to find ways that we can continue to stay together in Christ. So we'll conclude with Holy Communion as well. It is an Easter celebration, and traditionally this is a day where we get excited about our faith and what it is about. And we'll be hearing a wonderful story from the Gospel of Matthew later on uh, to bring that to uh, our minds and to our hearts. So let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we prepare with the brief order for confession. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll now take a few moments of silence to confess our sin in the presence of God, to where we have received the gift of love and to where we have shared the gift of love in these trying and separating times. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by Christ's authority, I therefore proclaim to you and declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God. And for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship and believe you give thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, On this Easter day, O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 31 through 43. He said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your alms have been remembered before God. Send therefore to Joppa, and ask for Simon, who is called Peter. 
he is staying in the home of Simon, a tanner by the sea. Therefore I sent for you immediately, and you have been kind enough to come. So now all of us are here in the presence of God to listen to all that the Lord has commanded you to say. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to all the people of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The Word of the Lord. Hi guys, happy Easter! Today we are celebrating, and do you know what we're celebrating? Jesus is risen from the dead, and it's a joyous day in the world of Christians all over the world. Okay, so we are going to go on an Easter egg hunt right now, and I'm going to hunt for eggs here, and you can help me, or you can hunt for eggs at your house if you'd like to do that. So, here's the one rule. You can't open your egg until I tell you to, okay? None of us can open our eggs until Erica says it's time. So, the very first one we're gonna look for is the purple egg. So, everybody get up and look around and I found it. Okay, now we have a purple egg because purple is the color of royalty. And it helps us remember that Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So the verse for our purple egg is from John chapter 1. Before the world began, there was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made through Him. Nothing was made without him. So, purple egg, Jesus is the king. All right, next we're going to look for orange. Anybody see orange? Here it is. So, an orange egg is the color of sometimes dirt or clay. And this orange egg helps me remember that Jesus came to live on earth fully man. He was a man that lived on earth. He did not sin, but he was a man and a person. And our verse for the orange egg is, 
from John chapter 1. The Word became a man and lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory that belongs to the only Son of the Father. The Word was full of grace and truth. So that was our orange egg. All right, next is pink. Do you see the pink egg? Have to go find it. Aha! The pink egg. So, pink makes me think of love. And so this pink egg reminds us of the red blood that Jesus shed when he died on the cross and the white forgiveness that God gives us because Jesus died on the cross. Red and white makes pink. And so that all represents God's love for us. And the verse for the pink egg is from John chapter 3. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. God gave his son so that whoever believes in him may not be lost but have eternal life. So there's our pink egg. Next is green. Gotta find the green egg. Hmm. There's blue. There we go. I found the green egg. So green is the color of grass and trees and other things that grow. And green reminds me of the new life that Jesus gives me when I trust him. And it reminds me that I can continue to grow in knowing him when I study my Bible and I pray and I go to church. So green represents our life and our growth in Christ. The green verse is from 1 John chapter 5. Whoever has the Son has life, but the person who does not have the Son of God does not have life. All right, we're getting there. We have two more. Next is the blue egg. Let's see. Found it. Okay, so blue makes me think of the sky and the wind and the air. And the wind and the air are things that we can't see, but we can see what it does. When the wind blows the leaves around, or when we feel the breeze on our face. This reminds me that Jesus is always with me through his Holy Spirit. Sometimes we think of our Holy Spirit as a breeze. It's there, we can feel it, but we can't see it or touch it. So that reminds us of God's Holy Spirit. And the verse for the blue egg is from John chapter 14. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. He will give you this helper to be with you forever. The helper is the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it does not see him or know him. But you know him. He lives with you, and he will be in you. And that helper is the Holy Spirit. All right. Last egg. Yellow. Gotta find the yellow egg. Aha! I got it. Okay, finally the yellow egg. Yellow, I have on my shirt. Yellow is a happy color. It reminds me of the sunshine. And it reminds me of heaven being full of light and warmth because God is there. God promises that if we trust in Jesus as our Savior and our Lord, then heaven with him will be our home forever and ever. So the verse for the yellow egg is from John chapter 14. Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. I would not tell you this if it were not true. I am going there to prepare a place for you. After I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. Then I will take you to be with me, so that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, and I am the truth and the life. 
The only way to the Father is through me. So that's our yellow verse. Okay, so we have our six eggs here, and now we're going to say a prayer. So if you would bow your heads and fold your hands, and we'll talk to God just for a minute. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this joyous day in our world. It's a little different this year. It's not as joyous as it usually is, as we are all at home trying to keep each other safe and healthy. We are missing being together. So please be with those who are sick, who are lonely, who are hungry, who are sad, and remind them that you and your spirit are always with us. And because Jesus came to earth and then died on the cross and was risen from the dead on Easter, we are able to be with you forever and ever. And we thank you for that. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Okay, so I want you to pick up an egg. Mine's the purple one. Now, how did I get this egg in my hand? I went and found it, right? I walked around, I picked it up. Somebody hid it here for me, but did I have to pay for it? No. Did I have to earn it? No, I didn't have to clean the bathroom in order to get it or do my homework. It was free, it was just there for me. That is exactly how God freely gives his love to us. His forgiveness and his mercy, we don't have to do anything. He gives it to us and it's ours forever and ever. So, the egg came to me for free, just like God's love. God's love is free. Okay, it's time to open your egg. Everybody open your egg. Aha! I got my favorite kind of candy. My daughter knows me well. I got a sweet Heath bar. And it's my favorite. And today on Easter, I want you to remember that Jesus is even sweeter than the candy. And as you go out and you hunt for eggs today, or you get some Easter candy to celebrate, I want you to remember that they are pro the eggs are probably filled with some sweet things. You might get some sweet treats today. And let those things remind you of God's sweet gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. God showers us with sweetness, and we have to remember that even when we're kind of having a bummer time being stuck at home. So enjoy your Easter. Remember your eggs. Remember the colors and what they stand for. And remember that God is always with you forever and ever. Love you much. I will see you soon. Take care. The Holy Gospel this day comes from St. Matthew in the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. And then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and, and indeed is, he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, as weird as it is to be in these times of self-isolation and social distance, I don't want you to miss just how excited 
the two Marys were, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, as they ran away from the tomb. I mean, they ran away, Matthew says, uh, and they were with fear and great joy. They had both the fear and the joy. There was something going on. And they were excited to be able to run and to be able to tell others that Jesus is, is not in the tomb. That whatever has happened is, 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 is happening and it's part of it. And then, of all things, they run into Jesus who says, Hi, and here's the part that is going to be so painfully poignant for you and I. They grab his feet. They grab his feet. How have you longed to be in contact, to be in connection, face to face, shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, hand to hand, with one of your friends or family members who, through this time of social distancing, you've not been able to connect with? The stay-at-home order has, has affected you to the point where you feel like there's never any handshake in your future. And, Perhaps there never will be, and there, there won't be any kind of continual contact except with those for whom you stay at home. But that is where the joy is made complete for our two Marys. Running from the tomb, all the confusion and fear that comes with the first Easter is, is put aside because they are in the presence of the resurrected Jesus, and they are at his feet touching them, and worshiping him. Now Easter, of course, is the way the church makes sense of this whole first Easter experience. The death of Jesus on the cross was traumatic for everyone. And then for the ladies who come as the first day of the week is dawning, as Matthew says, and the two Marys come in his version and find the tomb empty, well, what do you do with that? How do you, how do you make sense of something like this? The answer is Easter. The answer is that you talk about God's undying love for us. How death itself cannot stop God from loving us. How God so cares for the world that God has created. God so cares for the world that God has made that God continues to love it and redeem it. Not only in Jesus Christ who was alive, but Jesus Christ in his death. So that death itself is conquered by Jesus. Easter is how we make sense of the despair of the first day of Jesus' resurrection. So Easter is how we are going to make sense of the despair that is part of our lives right now. Easter is part of the way in which we begin to say, what is going on here? Because as we've now had a month, at least for us in Nebraska and other places, it's been longer and some it's been shorter. But for us, at least in this month, what has been resurrected in your life? What did you think was dead that now was found because you actually had the time or you had the attention or you had the order to look at something else? And you found a, an old hobby connected with a long-time friend on social media. Perhaps you started something new. Or perhaps you spent a lot of time wondering. Wondering what's the point. Wondering if there's ever anything worthwhile going back to should any of these stay-at-home orders and social distancing suggestions be lifted. What, what are you going to go back to? Are you going to go back to doing the same old, same old, so that the next time COVID-20 comes along, or COVID-21, or COVID-22, or whatever they're going to call the next one, we have to go back and do it all again? I mean, this is finally what Easter is about. That is bad as our situation can be, and right now, for many of us, it's pretty bad. That somehow the love of God is not stopping. The love of God is not stopped by COVID-19. The love of God is not stopped by our fear to handshake with each other. The love of God is not stopped because we've decided to stay at home. The love of God is, is out there in the world. Think of all the people right now that are providing care, food, 
shelter to so many people who cannot get it for themselves. Love of God is working through the hands of every respiratory therapist, every CNA in a nursing home, whatever it happens to be, the love of God is working. And that is Easter. Easter is the promise that the church has made to ourselves and to each other that God continues to love and work even through the most unrelenting of tragedies, through the darkest of days, through the shadow of the valley of death itself. The love of God will prevail. And so today we celebrate the love of God prevailing. Perhaps on this Easter day, instead of thinking about the brunch you missed or the golf you haven't yet played or the flowers you were going to plant, to think instead of all those people who are showing God's power and love through this horrible, horrible time. People who are continually bringing words of hope and encouragement, hands of care, baskets of food and grace. And through it all, the promise of God to love us and the power of the Holy Spirit through the resurrection of Jesus Christ is what makes Easter. So I say to all of you, Happy Easter. And may uh, the time that we are apart be short. And may our time together be soon. And now we'll hear from Bishop Brian Moss of the Nebraska Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Grace to you and peace, and Easter blessings to you and yours. However we gather this Easter morning, virtually, online, electronically, drive through or just in spirit, we're not gathering as we usually do, in person and in the flesh. That's hard for a people whose core conviction is that God cared so much for humanity that he chose to join us in person and in the flesh, who loved us so much that he suffered and died in the flesh and whose power over death was so complete that he was resurrected in the flesh. Still, we gather. We gather as the body of Christ, separated though we are by physical space and the very real threat of sickness, even death. We gather apart because we need to hear, to know, and to proclaim that resurrection is real, and that nothing that separates us from one another, from normalcy, from security, is stronger than the love which binds us inseparably to God and to one another. That the power of death that enforces our separation is no match for the power of life that will overcome it and see us gathered once again in the flesh. But until that time, honesty compels us to acknowledge that our experience of Easter is this year somehow flatter, somehow incomplete, somehow unsatisfying. To tell you the truth, it feels to me a little like waiting for that sneeze that you know is there but just won't happen. Easter Day arrives unstoppably, but that gratifying sneeze of a crowded over-the-top celebration exploding like a concentrated alleluia just won't happen. It'll still come. I know it'll still come. The first Sunday we all gather together in our own pews, our own places, the first Sunday we can sing and shout together, I'm sure that the Alleluia's will ring and Easter will happen again. And I pray again and again, as we remember what it was like to be forcibly separated and celebrate being together again. In the meantime, I invite you to celebrate Easter. Celebrate all you can. It is real, it is unstoppable, and its power is undiminished whether we feel it or not. And I invite you to reflect in your celebration and your prayer and your conversation with other believers on how this year's celebration of Easter might draw us just a little more into that mysterious time of Holy Week known as Holy Saturday. This year we know, in some ways as we've never known, the reality of Palm Sunday's Hosannas becoming Maundy Thursday's betrayal turning into Good Friday's slow death. Just weeks ago, we seemed to be cruising into a storm-free spring with a robust economy. But it came crashing down in short order, as our trust in governmental, medical, scientific, and economic systems betrayed us. We found out just how vulnerable we are. And our normalcy died a slow death. 
becoming this unstable waiting that longs for the simple gift of ordinariness to return, this unstable waiting that is our own Holy Saturday. I don't know how long this particular Holy Saturday waiting will last, and I am sure it won't end in a single burst of normalcy. When the end of our waiting comes, it will be slow and gradual. But remember this. Remember that while the disciples waited, anxious and unknowing, while Mary Magdalene and the other women waited for the simple normalcy of preparing a body, something was happening in the tomb that nobody could anticipate and nobody could understand and only God could do. That same God is up to the same thing in our Holy Saturday waiting. Our lives will return to normal, to a new normal. We will gather again, gather in the flesh. Our Holy Saturday will end and God will renew and bless whatever comes out on the other side. Not because we will have figured it all out or because we have properly primed the economy or because we have conquered the threat of death but because God longs still to be with us in person and in the flesh, longs to see us gathered again as his body, to fill us anew with abundant life. Because of all this, and because Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. resurrection on this Easter day we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
On this Easter day, we pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, uplifted by the promise of hope and healing and resurrection. We join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church and for the world and for all who are in need. I will end each petition, Lord, in your mercy. You may respond, hear our prayer. God of resurrection, from the very beginning you give the gift of church to women, to witnesses, to preachers and teachers. Open our ears to their stories on this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries and people of the world today experience isolation and despair. Build us together in our isolation as we seek comfort in your presence and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, the dying, assuring them of your loving presence, especially God, those who are finding this time apart from so many to be a time of trial to be a separation of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the creative and helpful service of all your people who serve to sing and move and live in your love. In this weird time of separation, be with those preachers and congregations that are continuing to provide welcome and hospitality to your message of grace and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died, especially those who have died of the effects of the coronavirus. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Let us take a few moments of silence to remember those who have died and those who grieve and mourn their loss. Continue, God, to keep us together in your never-failing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And with bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord, resurrected from the dead. Amen. We prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion. Let us pray. Gracious God, in the promise of the resurrection, we live and move and have our being. And so as we gather wherever we may be in this diaspora, we remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And that after supper he took the cup, blessed it, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. For as often as we eat from this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. And so let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
as you celebrate this meal wherever you may be, remember that this is the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen. You may receive the benediction. And as we go out into this blessed Easter day, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine on us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord's countenance smile down upon us all and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.